Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, now that we've got our character animated, let's do something like take him into Unity and see if we can actually get him running around in a game engine. So let's make sure our character is set up the way we need before we do any importing. If I go into pose mode here, and I'm gonna hit the A key and select all of the bones, you can see my animation cycles here. So I've got the run cycle up here, and that's uh, from frames 10 to 22, right here. I've also got a walk cycle here. I'm not gonna use that in Unity. I'm just gonna use the run and the idle. But up here, I've got the idle animation, and that's from frames 111 to 141. Now, I've just uh, jotted these numbers down on a piece of paper, so I have them, because I'm going to need to know where the uh, cycles are on the timeline here once I get it into Unity. In addition, what I've done is I've moved all the animation cycles up again, like I did at the beginning of the walk cycle video, I believe. I've moved them all up 10 frames, and then at frame one, I've taken them back to the default T-pose. And this too, Unity will need to compare it to the T-pose in its animation system. So having it in a T-pose like this is gonna be really helpful. And also what I've done just for um, housekeeping sake is I've deleted the outer eyes that we created because uh, we aren't going to need that in Unity. And I've also deleted the uh, shoelaces. Those were just so polygon heavy I thought I'd go ahead and, and delete those. So I think that's it really. Um, what I'm going to do here is go back to object mode and... Uh, and I'm going to save the scene. All right, well, let's go to Unity now. So here I am in Unity. I've just um, created a new project. When you open up Unity, it asks you to create a new project. I've created a 3D project. And then I've also just gone to File and Save Scene and created this new scene in the Assets folder. So now all I'm going to do is just bring this Blender file into the Assets folder of Unity. So I'll just take it and drag it and drop it. And what it's going to do is use Blender's FBX exporter to convert the file to FBX and drop it into the Assets folder of the project. So now what we have is our character and our character's materials that came through from Blender. So let's take a look at those. What I'm gonna do is select this character and over here in the inspector is the import settings and we're gonna go through these three uh, buttons to set up the character. So first off, the model, um, there probably isn't much we need to do here. Um, I think I'm gonna leave everything as is. Next, the rig. The only thing I need to change here is the animation type. I'm going to change this from generic to humanoid. And this will attempt to use Unity's fairly new mechanism animation system. Um, and let's see if this works. I'm just going to hit apply here. And this is where we needed it to be in the T-pose so it could find all the bones and the position of the rig. So I'm going to hit apply. And it's going to think a bit. And what we're looking for here is a little check mark by the configure button. If you don't have that, then it's going to be a more complex process. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and keep moving on. This is why when I rigged the character, I rigged it in a T-pose. This is why I modeled the character in a a T-pose because so many other systems that you might take the model into wants to see a classic T-pose. So now I'm going to go to the animations button here and this is where we can set up our animations. Now it is seen that I've got a frame range from 0 to 144 here and it's attempted to give me a couple clips here. These of course aren't going to do so I'm going to have to redo these clips. 
So what I'm going to do is this first animation clip that's been titled Default Take, I'm just going to rename that to Idle. And that'll be my Idle Pose. And the frame range that I jotted down on a piece of paper here was from 111 to 141. So there we go. So now if I scroll down, hopefully what I'll see is a lot of green buttons. And that's good in that it's seeing the rig, it's seeing the cycle, and it's um, letting me know that everything's going pretty well here. So I'm going to just open this up and hit play. And you can see the idle animation running here. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and, and enable loop time because this needs to run in a loop. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of these just to see how it works. Um, you can always go back and deselect these and reapply it. So I'll hit apply. And there we go. We now have an idle animation clip. All right. Well, that's great and all, but what do we do with it? Well, good question. The first thing let's do is let's get him out here on the grid. So I'm going to just take this character object here and just drag him straight out onto the grid. And I'll uh, zero him out in the position. I'll type in zero, zero, zero here. So now I know he's right there in the middle of the grid. Now the navigation in Unity is a little different than it is in Blender. It's actually, it actually matches the navigation in Autodesk Maya. And the way you tumble is you hold the Alt key down and then left mouse button click. And then to pan, you hold the Alt key down and middle mouse button click and drag. And to zoom, you hold the Alt key down and right mouse button click and drag. So there is our character. If we hit the play button, we can see that there's our character. We can see his feet. <laughs> Big deal, huh? So I'm going to hit the play button again and turn off the game for a minute. Let's do a couple of things like select the camera and you can see the preview of the camera here and I'm just gonna drag it up and move it back a bit so we can kind of look down on our character in a kind of classic third person camera kind of thing here. Move them down like this. Let's see how that looks. I'll hit the play button again and there he is. So now that we have our character in the scene, let's go ahead and hook up that idle animation. Um, if you click on the little arrow here by the character, you can see now that within all of these, um, I've got all these uh, pieces of, of the character, the actual character mesh, the eyes, um, but right down here is the idle animation. So what we have to do is get this animation onto the character itself. So we're going to need to do a couple of things. You can see here if you select the character in the hierarchy that there is a, a slot here called controller. And currently it has no animation controller in there. What we need to do is we need to put one in there. Once we do, then we'll have a place to put the idle animation. So to do that, I'm going to right click in the assets window here, go to create, and way down here there's animator controller. You can't really see that. Let me see if I can uh, move this up and right click up here. Here it is, animator controller. So I'll create one of those and I'll call this um, player controller. So that's going to be the animation controller for our character. Now I can take this and drag it over and drop it into that slot. Now, what does that do for us? Well, if we go up to Window and select Animator, now we have an animator slot here. And here is the animator 
that where we're going to put our um, idle animation. So now all we need to do is just open this back up, grab this idle animation clip, and drag it into the animator. And here is our first animation. So let's go back to our scene now and push the play button. And there he is. There is our idle animation. So this is the same kind of thing we're going to do for the run animation also. But before we do that, let's get some uh, textures on him. So I'll hit the play button again to turn the game off. And let's bring in some of the uh, textures that we created for our character. So in the same way that we brought in the Blender file, I can bring in these uh, textures just by dragging them into the Assets folder. So I have them here. I've got my color map here. So I'll just drag that in. I've got my normal map that we created in during the uh, texture painting videos. I've got my specular map here. And I've got my eyes color map here. So if I take a look at my character in the hierarchy, I'm gonna roll down this triangle here and choose the actual character. I can see I've got a standard material on this. This is new in uh, Unity 5. I'm going to change from standard to standard specular. And let's just start dragging our uh, textures into our material here. I'll put the uh, diffuse here in the albedo. I'll put the normal map in the normal map slot. And I'll put the specular in the specular slot as well. And it says here that this texture is not marked as a normal map. And it has a little button here to fix that. So I'll just click that and see how that works. And that helps quite a bit. So there is our character set up so far. Now let's work on the eyes. So I'll select the eye. And for this, I just need a standard material and should be able to drag this right into the slot there. So there is our character. We've got him set up with an idle animation. We've got the materials and textures on him. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll actually set up the run animation and set up a character controller so that we can control him and move him around our scene. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, hit the like button, check out my YouTube channel for more Blender videos, and subscribe to get weekly updates. Thanks for watching. Till next time.